Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you fresh out of the gym on my way to work today. Um, Survivor Series, right up around the corner. I will honestly tell you that after last night's Monday Night Raw, let me tell you honestly about last night's Monday Night Raw. Yesterday, Raw is Twitter. It is that way every time they go overseas, whether if it's to go to London, last night they were in Glasgow. Most of the time I, I go to lunch. I uh, try my best, but basically read everything about Monday Night Raw that there is to do. Went back to work. Um, normally on a normal Monday night, I sort of stay uh, sort of close to my phone. I check for updates about what's going on during the show as it's going down live. Um, look through some tweets and things like that. Yesterday, completely forgot it was Monday. Cared more about the Monday Night Football game with the uh, Seahawks and Bills. Got home, was almost asleep before I realized, oh shit. It was Monday and it was raw, uh, but I will tell you honestly that the uh, from the videos that I watched last night, the only thing that really meant anything and the only thing that's really going to mean anything at Survivor Series is Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, and that it, that means a lot coming from a guy like me. I'm not a Goldberg guy, never have been, never will be. I'm not really a Brock Lesnar guy. We'll give it up to him, really saying that he does knock it out of the park and his matches are always really fun, but uh, to me... I, I don't know. I mean, people say that he and John Cena are the two biggest draws in the business. I don't really see a boom in the business when Brock Lesnar comes around. I think that, honestly, in my opinion, the, the appeal has, has sort of drawn off. They use him at the time of the year. It, it's almost like the same knocks that they have on Hulk Hogan, the same knocks that they have on Triple H. Um, they disappear for the times of year, um, so you can't point at them and basically say that they're the, the reason why ratings are low. They come back um, when the uh, Monday Night Football season ends. Um, they come back for WrestleMania. They come back for SummerSlam. They're a part of these big shows that they know is going to, to bring in people because the name value is there. You're not seeing freaking Brock Lesnar booked on Roadblock. You're not seeing Brock Lesnar booked on... Uh, it's another bad pay-per-view. Um, yeah, uh, shit. Um... Bo not Border Wars, that's damn uh, ROH, but um, Battle Line, wh whatever, the uh, Battleground, that stupid show, you ain't seen him show up on that show, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to use him on shows that mean something that they can make some money off of. Brock versus Goldberg is going to be an event. This honestly, in my opinion, feels like it's supposed to be a WrestleMania dream match. Um, while they're doing it at Survivor Series, um... I don't know if maybe, I know the video game always does really well. They always talk about how many, you know, the units they sell and things like that. I don't know if maybe the contract that, that they had to sign, um, the video game company, you know, pays out more than they make or something like that. But it seems like they're really following along with whatever the video game wants them to do. And it seems that the video game pushed for this match to happen. So WWE went out and got Goldberg and uh, they brought him in. And this is the match that they're going to do. These guys are going to beat the hell out of each other, and it's going to be a fun match to watch. Um, I don't know how much Bill can take. Um, the big thing to think about is this guy hasn't been wrestling um, since 2002, so it's been a good, well, maybe 2004, I apologize. Um, yeah, so he hasn't been around in, in, in 12 years, um, and... You know, he's been making car shows and doing podcasts. I don't even know if that podcast is still around. I, I don't really listen to the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast as much as I once did. And that's where I used to hear the commercial for the Goldberg podcast where he would have on like Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And, um, you know, guys like that, you know, talk about wrestling. That's what that's what people want to hear. People talk about wrestling. But um, I don't know. I mean... It doesn't make a lot of sense for Goldberg to win this match. In my opinion, it made it would have made a whole lot more sense for um, you know Ambrose to beat Brock, and that would sort of would have made him a more appealing champion once he won the big one. But uh, they let Brock beat him at WrestleMania 32. Um, as far as I can remember, the only blemishes on on Brock's record is that Taker beat him at SummerSlam. Um, Seth Rollins cashed in at WrestleMania 31, but didn't even pin him. And Cena beat him in his return match at Extreme Rules. That the match was so bloody and gruesome to Cena that I don't think really, if you took a poll of 100 fans, I don't think more than half of them would remember that Brock actually lost that match and Cena won. And that was just basically Vince trying to get one over that the uh, wrestlers are tougher than the UFC fighters. Um, or at least smarter, I guess you can say. But... 
there was no reason for Cena to win that match. Um, of course, Brock was able to beat Cena at the SummerSlam. Um, and he tossed him around and gave him, you know, 18 German suplexes and just basically said, this is my championship now. I'm going to take it. Um, it's going to be a fun match. I can definitely tell you that I'm excited for it. Um, the wrestling fan that I am now, that I care more about the backstage business than I do about the in the ring, sort of like being a guy who listens to a lot of podcasts and things like that. I mean, definitely it doesn't make sense for Goldberg to win, um, Brock to continue on with the streak that he's been running uh, where he hasn't lost in all these years. Oh, I fucking forgot. Triple H beat him at WrestleMania. Fuck. Bad match, too. Uh, <laughs> that's my guy. That's my guy right there. That's that guy that I live long and support that every time somebody throws something out there to knock him, I try to pick him up. He doesn't really have the negative impact that he used that he used to have. People, you know, because of what he's done with the NXT and things like that, people have sort of turned it around for Triple H. And he doesn't really get knocked on like the message boards and on YouTube and um, by the wrestling fan as much because people see that he's turning the corner and he's now becoming that businessman. And I think people believe that when he gets the leash, it's going to be better than it is right now with uh, with ancient old Vince McMahon behind the helm. But um, we'll have to see. But um, you know, the, people say that what they're going to do is Brock versus um, Shane at WrestleMania, which would make more sense if Shane and SmackDown would have been the people to sign Goldberg and say that they're bringing him uh, to Survivor Series to sort of have um, this, the, the, the feud continue. You know, you know, Shane got beat up by Brock at the end of SummerSlam, and that was in August. Now here we are in November, heading towards Thanksgiving, and... It hasn't been brought up since Stephanie on Raw said that she was giving a $500 fine to Brock Lesnar to show him she means business, not to, not to pick on the big mans. But um, that sort of made it think like they were continuing on with this Raw versus SmackDown feud and things like that. And, you know, especially with how heavy um, Survivor Series is um, to the fact that, um, you know, it's Raw versus SmackDown all the way down the board except for this Goldberg um, versus Brock match. Brock is a raw competitor. Goldberg easily could have done his um, segments on SmackDown. They could have done the face to face um, a lot like they did with Randy versus um, uh, Randy. Yeah, Randy versus Brock for the SummerSlam match, um, where you know Shane and Daniel Bryan escorted him to Raw to make sure that nothing bad would happen to him and somebody would have his back and things like that. Um, it would have made it a lot better. It would have made the SmackDown versus Raw feud seem a whole lot more too, and especially. You know, you could have had Shane there at ringside and had him take another German suplex um, and continue on that view to make you think that they are going that direction. Because once they pick it up again, it's going to be hard for the, uh, you know, sort of, I just watched the pay-per-view wrestling fan to, to pick up on it. Like, oh yeah, at SummerSlam, Brock kicked his ass. So, we'll see. It's going to be a big one. Here we are a couple more weeks out. I know they're doing Raw face-to-face -face on, um, on Monday Night Raw. Uh, next week, it's going to be Brock and Goldberg looking into the eyes of each other. Probably going to start pushing and shoving, see who the bigger bull is in the ring. So, looking forward to that one. Peace out, everybody.